All right, well, first off, thank you very much for agreeing to talk to us, Cullen. It's, uh, it's a real pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, and, you're welcome. Um, pleasure to be here. <laughs> well, one of the things I've been watching a lot of recently is The Staircase. So I think um, that'd be the best place to start because uh, you played Jim Harden, the, uh, the prosecutor in this, um, this whole trial. So what was it like getting to play a character, well, a real life character like Jim Harding in The Staircase and acting alongside the, the likes of Colin Firth in this show? Uh, it was it was an incredible opportunity. Uh, I was familiar with the case and um, and familiar with Antonio Campos and um, yeah, it was it was great. You know, this was uh, I've I've played real people before, um, but to where uh, the general public wasn't as aware of their persona. Um, so I think Jim Harden because of the because of uh, because of the documentary and because of the uh, how public the trial was, I think people um, were and are familiar with with who he is. So it was interesting to to uh, to have somebody that that um, I really wanted to settle into and just and reflect very realistically. Um, and uh, working so that that was incredible um, windfall there just to get to play him and he. Um, He's such a particular person, and uh, and then once I found out that Parker Posey was playing Freda Black, that was that, yes. that that was that blew me away, and I was you know really the icing on the cake there. Um, I'm a huge fan of hers, and um, pardon my adjustments here. Huge fan of hers, and she and uh, Freda's so, and she's just perfect to to play Freda, of course, and so made. Um, made made it so much uh more interesting and fun to play jim um you know those two characters are such um there's such contrast between freda and jim and uh mm. i think parker and i both chose to go full bore into into uh really getting their uh specific personalities down so yeah. long answer but there you go <laughs> No, but it is really interesting because um, there is a really fascinating dynamic between the two. Um, it, and, and it really does. I mean, I the first thing I watched was the the, um, the documentary. Um, I actually, well, but living in France, the documentary was first aired on Canal Plus and it was a kind of French documentary. So I watched that a while ago, actually. But it kind of got a resurgence on Netflix. And then hearing that uh, that you guys were doing this show, we actually got to speak to Maggie Maggie Con um, uh, not, yeah. not too yeah not too long ago and um, that was that was really fascinating getting to talk to her about the like the insight into this case and how much people knew about it beforehand and um, one of my questions was did you know did did you know anything about the case beforehand but you did kind of answer that but what what was the extent of your of your knowledge <clears throat> I um, I was aware of it I I grew up in North Carolina um, oh, okay. And um, I, I grew up in Winston-Salem, which is just an hour and a half from, um, no, yeah, an hour and a half or so from Durham, two hours. And uh, so, it, and then I, I was living in Wilmington, North Carolina when, uh, when the trial was happening in the early 2000s. But I was aware of it, um, very, very aware, you know, it was, uh, especially in the state, there was a lot of news about it. Um, mm -hmm. So I was aware of it, but then... And knew of the documentary, but didn't until the opportunity to audition for the role came along. I hadn't watched the the uh, documentary, so yeah. then I watched the doc, and it was just uh, it was just fascinating to me. Just you know, the, all the layers of, of uh, just the the nuances and layers of it. It was just just uh, just fascinating, and you know. Um, mind-boggling i mean I, I at the end of watching the documentary i didn't know i didn't believe one way or another it was uh it was, very, yeah. it was an interesting thing but then studied uh yeah that I, once i got the role i studied a lot of court tv i watched like almost all of the testimony and you know any mm. especially anything that jim and freda um anybody that jim and freda were questioning um yeah it's quite it's quite interesting actually because this this month has been like a really 
<laughs> a really weird thing, like kind of month for corporate, like almost we had the whole Johnny Depp Amber Heard thing and we had the mm. staircase kind of out at the same time. So I think a lot of people now are starting to know a lot more about how things work in court, <laughs> which, which yeah. I find quite interesting. <laughs> So everyone, yeah. I, I hear a lot of people saying hearsay, objection, you know, all that kind of stuff now and seem to know every single phrase in the book. Oh, yeah. And it not that there is a shortage of court of uh, court TV or no. procedural based yeah. dramas. But this, you know, I, I think this was uh, this set out um, to not, you know, to to stay away from feeling like that. I think it was yeah. in and out of itself. But um, and, and, and and I think it pretty darn accurate uh reflection of the of what actually goes on in there yeah, yeah i think so too and did, did you ever get to meet jim in preparation yes for the role? yeah that was um yeah. and that was one that that was uh thanks to uh parker too you know once like i said yeah, I, I found out she was playing fred at the table read and then she she reached out to me um through an email after the table reads and said hey you know, I love you, Jim Harden. Let's let's get to work. You know, let's get to work on these characters. And that's just it's rare that it shouldn't be rare, but it's it's rare that somebody you're gonna work in tandem like that with wants to reach out and do the work, you know, before you're mm. on set. And and especially somebody of her ilk and uh, of her level in the career. But she did and I was so grateful yeah. for it. And part of we met with Antonio, talked to him and then Parker said, you know, let's, um, this happened before we met with Antonio. She said, let's call Jim. Let's get him on a Zoom call. And so we did. And so we had him for, he talked to us for like two hours and really kind and forthcoming. And um, it was just, it was just so great to have that uh, sort of relaxed time with him. I mean, we asked him yeah. some hard questions, but we also just kind of got to know him and, um it was great to see him to see something other than the the performative side that you see of people like that where they're in the courtroom or giving an interview or a press conference yeah and that must have really i suppose helped you kind of tackle the role as well absolutely to talk to yeah. him personally yeah because yeah you, this isn't yeah, the first time you've played a real life it's not the first time you've played a real life character is it in your career it's um, not <clears throat> no no, but and I haven't. What, I've, did, I, I have. What's that? No, go on. <laughs> so, oh, I haven't I felt the off, obligation. I haven't felt the obligation for some reason to be as accurate. I mean, before now, I, and again, like I said, because I think uh, who I've played before, they haven't. I don't think the there's been more room for interpretation. I mean, the public have, mm. is not that aware of who these people are. But Jim and Fred were. They are who they are, and they're so particular. So yeah. it was different. Yeah. Well, I mean, the I think the is the staircase still airing right now because it's oh, yeah. um it's on H yeah it's on HBO it's on HBO Max in the US. I'm in France, yes. so it's a bit it comes a bit later in France. But uh, yeah, so uh, I suppose we could move uh, like move away a bit from the staircase and onto the other thing that uh, that we love here at Small Screen, and that's Outer Banks. Oh uh, sure. Oh, well, I do, before before we move on, I, for, yeah. I forgot the answers. You just said what it was. What was it like to? I, I didn't want to neglect <clears throat> part of the question. What was it like to work with people like Colin Firth? Oh and, yes. And, and uh, just just the, the, you know, not just Colin. I mean, everyone in that cast. I mean, that was a brilliant cast, and it was one of these sort of rare occasions where there wasn't a sour. You know, there. There wasn't a rotten apple in the barrel. I mean, just every I think I thought the casting was brilliant, and everyone was just brilliantly kind and generous and um, and wonderful. So I mean, I, it was mm. the the bar was certainly raised. Um, you know, in the in the courtroom scenes, you look over and you've got it's just it, it's a it's it's a an array of just some of the best. I mean, you've got, uh, Michael yeah. Stuhlbarg and. Colin Firth, uh, Justice League, who played Tom Marr, was was incredible too. And then you know you've got Patrick and Dane and Sophie and Odessa, and then Tim Genny, who plays uh, who who played the brother, and yeah. um, Trini Alvarado. Uh, who there there just wasn't 
everybody was so committed, whether it was their turn or not, you know, that just mm. to just to glance over and see everybody there and in the moment and this uh, great setting was just uh, it, it was surreal at times. And anyway, just uh, one of the best experiences ever. Well, that I really mean, that, that is it's really good to hear that. And also, um, given like how many people were on the set and how many uh like talented people there were were there any favorable moments you had on the set of the staircase that so many uh, just so many with parker honestly she was just yeah. she's she and i when we met it was like long lost siblings i mean um we had we had a ball and just so but you know it gets so heavy that we just when they said cut we we would cut up and have just a lot of fun and she she became a, a, a she is a very dear friend now um, hmm. but, uh, that was, that was fun. And uh, like Colin and Michael and them for a while in the courtroom, they'd look over and they called us the fun table and say, ah, oh, man, we wish we could be at the fun table. <laughs> but, uh, just <laughs> any one of many moments with her was pretty, uh, was pretty fantastic. Well, that's good to hear. Maggie said something similar about the, the atmosphere on set being really good and, hmm. uh, it being a very good set to, to be part of. So it's it's nice to hear those sorts of stories because um, you know sometimes you don't you hear that it doesn't go so well, but no, <laughs> it's good. No, and some and, of the and, and it's odd that it's go on. Uh, uh, just uh, some of the other favorite moments was were just uh, some of my dear friends from Wilmington, uh, from North Carolina came and had great roles in this too. My friend Jason Davis played Fred Atwater, uh, Caitlin's father, uh, and we're, he's a good buddy from for years. I mean, I've known him for uh, 24 years or something like that. And so hmm. this, this, and we've, <clears throat> we've done some indie stuff together, but here we were like out in the wild and the same thing with, um, with Mike Holmes, who plays Dwayne Deaver, the, the blood spatter guy. He's a theater yeah. friend from Wilmington too, an incredible actor. So you'd get, I just had these, uh, hometown talents come in and uh, and play too is just really nice paul teal who played brett wagamot the the <laughs> the escort um it was just uh, that was that was really cool good well that i mean it's always it's always good it's honestly such such a brilliant cast and uh, the infamous blood spatter analyst yes <laughs> forgot, forgot about that <laughs> yeah um weird, weird yeah guy very strange yeah real life very strange guy yeah very well played um yeah well again i suppose um time to move on to uh yes. to right. outer banks which is uh something is it's something that small screen readers just love absolutely love this show and um and i suppose we, we wanted to know a little bit about how you became involved in the show outer banks um, like I get involved in any show, uh, really, I, I auditioned and, um, yeah. and then had, uh, had a, had a couple of callbacks and I've, <clears throat> um, I, yeah, I, I, I think that was the first role I auditioned for in that, <clears throat> pardon me, um, <clears throat> so pardon me again, had callbacks, wound up, um, wound up at the table read before I had really been cast. Um, and I, I was, I can't remember. I had to, I had to come back. I had to draw, I had to change plans, some travel plans to come back in time, uh, for mm. this table read, but the, um, casting director, the Finn, uh, Lisa Mae Finn Cannon, who, uh, yeah. great, great regional casting director. Um, and, and casting director. I think they're the sole casting directors for it now. Anyway, she said, come do this table read. They want you to read Shoop again and a couple of other roles. And she said, this will be a really uh, great and kind of rare opportunity to have an in-person callback for this. And so I did, I went and did the table read. And um, when we broke after the first, um, after the first episode, we took a break and all the kids uh, were, were in the break room and Chip Aston, uh, who plays Ward, and, um, Chase and Rudy and JD and Madison and Madeline were all in there, and they're like, they're like, bro, you're you're, you're killing this. Like for what it's worth, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna put a word in for you. And if you know, I'll, so I don't know which of those young beautiful people put in a good word for me, <laughs> but uh, um, it was 
<clears throat> I appreciate it. Maybe they help push me over the line. I don't know. Yeah. It, well, it sounds it sounds like it's another another show that has like a really kind of together cast. Like you you all oh, seem yeah. like you're very very close. Um, is that is that the case with the uh, <coughs> Outer Banks? It really is. Um, yeah. And I mean, I'm I'm not, you know, I don't play as frequently as they do. And so there's no. there's, um, but it's true. It's um, anytime I'm on set, it just it feels like you know stepping back into family. Um, <clears throat> and that goes for the crew too. I mean, I knew, I knew a lot of the a lot of the crew are um, Wilmington, North Carolina based crew that that I was mm. that I are good friends of mine that I've worked with on many other shows and know through other um, independent films and stuff back in back in Wilmington, North Carolina. Um, so, uh, yeah, we're. I mean, our camera operators, our sound guys, our gaffers. I mean, every it's just like the the whole team it's is just uh, incredible and everybody really looks out for one another and and has fun um and those and you know as for that young cast too like they're they've become such a cool unit and and so uh, they're so in sync with their characters it's it's fun to watch them just kind of let that stuff grow and um yeah. it, very organically yeah yeah, that that really comes off on screen. And um, when when you were first involved in the show, like Netflix shows are a bit tricky to kind of to know whether it's going to become a success or not. Mm -hmm. I can imagine, especially if it's the first season. Um, when when you were working on on Outer Banks, did you get that feeling that this was going to become a massive hit because Outer Banks is now one of Netflix's most popular shows. I mean, our numbers on the show, on the show is ridiculous on the site. <laughs> so obviously lots well, yeah. of people really, really do love it. <laughs> it's a, uh, it, it definitely, it definitely didn't feel like that wasn't going to happen. Um, yeah. You know, it was just, it was a great recipe. Um, and the, the scripts were just, they, they were so fun to read. Mm. I mean, you know, you, you, you could feel immediately that, that vibe there i mean and i think jonas and shannon and, and josh uh who wrote on that primarily at first uh they um i think they they, they just had they had that winning salad of you know of, yeah you know of teen drama like dawson's creek kind of things plus the outsiders plus the goonies and and so yeah. you know <clears throat> it's it just and then they they cast like just really talented good looking people and and, sh and <laughs> shooting it in a, in a beautiful area and um yeah it just it smelled like it was gonna it was like it was gonna swim so i don't, I don't know how things can smell like they're gonna swim but i'm gonna stick with that <laughs> mixed metaphor <laughs> uh the, the goonies is something that really came to mind when i started watching it. and i think a lot of people said it actually when they're reading maybe reading scripts i think i heard some of the actors saying that they did they did think that there was a lot of, there was that kind of Goonies flavor to yeah. the show that I think really helped. Um, I got a, a couple more questions for you before before we let you go. Um, sure. Yeah. We uh, one of one of the other shows that's doing really well at the moment is Stranger Things, or the Netflix show, and that a bit like Shoot, there has that there's a, a character in there that um, I when I first started watching Out of Banks, I did see a bit of a similarity between Jim Hopper. And she kind of law enforcers that are quite disobedient. <laughs> so is that the best way to describe it? it, it yeah. Do you think there's something that that really attracts people to those sorts of characters? Um, you know, I think now. You, do you mean like the viewing public, or do you mean actors? Yes. Well, the, the <laughs> viewing public I meant, but also as far as an actor, is it is that something um, that attracts you to the role? Well, I I think. Um, for for fans for for the viewing public, I think it's it's just always fun to see somebody playing against the grain, against what is expected yeah. of somebody in that archetype or whatever. Um, uh, and and for actors, of course, like if there's if you can, the more nuanced something is, the more you can kind of chew and peel away and and kind of and um, and, and and surprise people with things. I think the the more fun yeah. the role is. Um, and but but yeah, I, I th Shoop was originally I think 
molded to uh, written to be uh, a little uh, a little dirtier a little more uh mm. ethically blurry like um and you know on the side of wrong um and i yeah. and, and I, I i wanted to have a little more fun with him and have him be and like kind of have him play the reality of that he's known these kids for this long time so i mean yeah maybe he's skimming a little money but he also he <laughs> does look out for the well-being of the people in tiny kildare county and he does care about people and um yeah and and you know and make the all those relationships real um and they and they, not that not that he wasn't real in the original scripts but it was that's another um nod to the collaborative effort on the set like that includes mm. the writers and the directors that they really listen to us as actors and let us help inform who uh, who we are, who the characters that they wrote yeah. are. Um, but yeah, I think there, there's something to that, you know, to, to people who aren't what you expect, what you would expect of them that attracts people to it. Certainly did yeah. me. Yeah. I think that's why that's why people do like really they do i mean I, we know that fans love your character uh, and and want want more love from, hate from him. <laughs> yeah that, but, everybody's uh, yeah, like leave there's... the pogs alone <laughs> <laughs> like, I, lo I love the feedback i love i really i do i love the enthusiasm but you know on social media you'll get people hitting you up and going, going yeah. just, just leave john be alone don't you know who did it and you're like i read the scripts <clears throat> yeah. but my character can't know what he doesn't know I mean, whatever um, yeah, I'm pretty sure <laughs> I, our viewers and readers are, are pokes for life. That is something that comes up all the time. E for <laughs> real, man. <laughs> yeah. um, I suppose one last question before uh, yeah. before we let you go. A bit of a cheeky one. Um, you're famously known as the extremist candidate in Nine Man Three. Uh, <laughs> <Am> how, <I? laughs> yeah. how did that come about? Um, again, <laughs> I. Uh... I auditioned. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, was, I was I was living in Wilmington, and this actually these are just I, I I lucked out both of these. I was living in Charleston when I got cast as Shoop. I just moved here. Yeah, I've been here about a year, and then and I was living in Wilmington, and that's Iron Man three was shooting in Wilmington. Jackie Birch, the casting director, had me come in and read for Caged Heat, which is that was like the code name on these Marvel movies. Yeah. You can't know you can't know what you're auditioning for there. Uh, you know, um, mystery Marvel project caged heat. And, uh, and you read and you, you get these dummy sides. You're not, you don't even get the real scene. You're going to be auditioning with, but I think the first, I went in an audition for some, uh, some hostage that was begging for his life, I think. And then, yeah. um, that was probably in the, in the, um, in the Mandarin scene or something. I don't know, but mm. it wasn't what I, I read for that. And uh, and then you just leave and you forget about it. And I was like, oh, I guess I didn't get cast. And the movie was there almost finished shooting the movie. And I get the notification. Hey, do you want to come in? And we can't tell you exactly what you're playing. There's going to be maybe some improv. Um, just it was so it was so weird. They're like, come in. And are you OK? Are you OK? Um, not are you OK being disrobed? There you'll be. Waiting. I was like, oh, OK. What kind of what are what are we shooting caged heat? <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, I went in and I got dots drawn all over me and I blew up. So cool. that was pretty cool. I um, mean, not not everyone can say they got to got to get blown up in a in a Marvel movie. <laughs> yeah, my my kids finally watched. My youngest kids finally uh, watched it. They were they were duly impressed that I blew up in <laughs> in their superhero world. Well, wonderful. Well, thank you so much for talking with us, Cullen. It's Absolutely. been a, a real pleasure having you having you on the show. And, it was uh, a pleasure. Thanks and, for yeah, having we, us. We can't, we can't wait to, to see the last couple of episodes of, I, don't, I can't remember how many more is left, because it's just the release schedule's all over the place, being in Europe, not being in the US. But uh, of the staircase. staircase. Yeah. And, uh, and then also, there is, there's more, uh, is there more Outer Banks to come? Or oh, yeah. Not we're we're shooting yes? season three right now um cool yeah uh I've, I've already i've gone in and shot a little bit and uh we've, we've gotten to re reconvene reunite um already the gang's back in town uh so that Wonderful. that's back underway and then 
and there's a there's an Apple TV show called um, Blackbird that's coming out that I'm I'm in. Yes. And, um, that yeah. that'll be out July eighth on Apple TV. I'm excited about that. And Paul Walter Hauser and Taryn Edgerton and uh, Sepet and Moafi, and it, it was one of Ray Liotta's last projects too. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, and uh, and Greg Kinnear. Uh, so really really cool. That's it. Um, that that's really cool. And then uh, Your Honor, the Showtime show with uh, yeah with Brian Cranston. That that's they're underway with a season two for that. So. Awesome. Lots of stuff to, to look yeah. looking forward to. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Thank you. So, thank you so much, Cullen. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me.